fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the, flesh, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now notice he says there, and have dominion over. And there we see that Adam was given dominion and authority on the earth. He wasn't given that dominion authority over heaven, but he did the earth. And if you remember, Adam, he represented the human race, right? So, but that was the message given to him. Then God's message to Noah. Notice Genesis 9-1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Of course, this is after the flood. And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. There we see he was to have dominion on the earth, but now added is a covenant. And of course, what is the covenant? You see a rainbow all the time. What does that mean? He won't destroy the earth ever again. He made a promise to him by water, by flood. Okay? We don't have to worry about that around here. <laughs> Man, it's dry, isn't it? Uh, it's just the ground like rock right now around here. We can't get a break. But, uh, but anyway... In Noah's life, through his life, as you study that, we learn that God judges sin. And we know what happened that created and caused the flood. The imagination of man was always evil and so on. And he also, though, changed how he operates with man and for man and under Noah more so than back here now. There's a change that's taken place. What did he set up with Noah, by the way? What did he set up? What? Somebody said government. He set up, if you shed a man's blood, what? Your blood shall be shed. So he begins to deal and change his ways in which he deals with man. Okay? Then, what was God's message with Abraham? Okay, Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And by the way, that land is Israel, and it goes all the way over from, uh, uh, you could say, uh, the Mediterranean, all the way over to Nile, but all the way then back east, all the way to half of Iraq. Uh, that's, the, that's the promised land, actually. But anyway, he says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So God promises Abraham a great nation, to be over the earth. But also, Abraham is promised land and seed to be the blessing on the earth. Genesis 15, 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So here... We have land, up, ah, land. Well, where am I? I don't have Abraham. Why don't somebody say something to me? Well, I'm doing good tonight. How about you? <clears throat> okay, land and a seed. Okay, so I'll get this going in a second. So land and a seed is promised through Abraham. But do you see how from Adam to Noah, <coughs> excuse me, he comes over here and he's adding things to how he's dealing with people now. Now here, they're going to be a great nation. 
And they're going to be the centerpiece of the entire world as that nation. And the nation's going to be Israel, of course. Okay? And for man now, man has to go through this nation. Whereas before, they just went to God. Now, maybe they went through a family who knew God. There weren't many. But now you go through the nation Israel. But he's making these promises. This message is different than this message or this message. You see that? Okay. Now God added something else too. Genesis 17, verse 10 with Abraham. This is my covenant. So he gives Abraham here a covenant. And it's circumcision. Okay, let's just read it now. Between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. And the uncircumcised man whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So this covenant here, you couldn't be a part of it if you weren't circumcised. So it was required. Now that requirement here, he's got land, a seed, a nation, now circumcision. And circumcision is a requirement. Or you couldn't participate in anything under the Abrahamic covenant. Okay? Now that's different than previous, isn't it? Do you see that? Okay? Just follow me. I promise it'll make sense. Then God's message to Moses. Israel became God's firstborn. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Verse 23. Did I give you that? Go on, do it if you can there, Kelly. I have it written down here. I forgot to give it to you. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. He's my firstborn. You don't let me, my people go. Your firstborn's going down. Did we know the story of what happened? <laughs> Pharaoh's firstborn son did go down, didn't he? And because he would not let Israel or the Jewish people at that time uh, to go. Then God added another requirement. Exodus 19, 3 through 5. And Moses went up unto God... Sinai, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now God promises those individual people, those individual people who would be faithful and believing and would be obedient, they would become his favorites. They would become a kingdom of priests. They would become washed with water and sprinkled with blood. Exodus 19:6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay? So here he tells Moses to keep the covenant. But also he gave him a new covenant. What was it? Law. Did he give Moses the law? Right. And they can be kingdom of priests. Okay. But now the law is introduced. 
uh, kingdom priests. Notice chapter 29, verse 4, what they would do with the priest. And Aaron and his sons, now get this, thou shalt bring into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shalt wash them with water. It was a ceremonial cleansing is what it was, okay? Then shalt thou kill the ram and take of his blood and put it up on the tip of his right ear of Aaron, up on the tip of his right ear of his sons, up on the thumb and so on. In other words, all down them, they wanted to smell and look like a sacrifice, a death. They would be sprinkled with water and blood, being a priest. Okay? Uh, let me see here. Uh, Leviticus 8, 6, Kelly. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. What did he actually do? He baptized them. That's exactly what he did. Okay? So, to be this priest, I'm going to throw this baptism in here. We'll get that again before we get over this, okay? Then, I missed another one. I'm doing terrible tonight. I missed David. Okay? I missed David. How could I do that? David's seed would have an everlasting king who will sit on David's throne in Israel on the earth. And God promises Israel a kingdom with a king sitting on David's throne. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. And when, the day, when thy days, David, be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom. What? So somebody's going to come and build a, build a, a place, a kingdom in a sense, Solomon. And then it, that seed's going to down the road. It's going to be forever one day. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And then verse 16. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever, right? Okay, Psalm 89, 18. For the Lord is our defense and the Holy One of Israel is our... So who's going to be the king of that kingdom? Who's the Lord? When it's in capital letters, it refers to Jehovah. Who is Jehovah? Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne of David forever. Okay? Verse 34 and following of Psalm 89. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. Now we know that's going to happen in the kingdom one day. Okay, when God deals with Israel. That's just another great verse that nobody has replaced Israel, have they? Huh? That would make God a liar. And God doesn't do that. Titus 1-2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised. So we don't have to worry about that. So what he promised David, he's going to fulfill it. And then, <laughs> so David, he's going to have the kingdom but especially the throne with the king on the throne. Okay? Now, the prophets come on the scene here. And the prophets, because of Israel's sinning, uh, they kept telling Israel that the wrath of God was coming. They needed to repent and walk humbly before the Lord. That was their job, to try to call Israel back in a right relationship with God. Isaiah 13, 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger 
to lay the land desolate and 